if it had not been for the Lord is a statement that I pray is an anthem of my life. What's up, what's up, beautiful and loved and valued people. I am so thankful for you. I'm so thankful that God made you. I'm so thankful that you were born. I'm so thankful that you're alive at the time that you're alive. It's so purposeful, so significant, and I hope that you know this full well, deep down in your core. I hope you know full well that the Lord's works are wonderful and He made you fearfully and wonderfully. It's just factual. My name is Emma and I'm so honored that you hopped on over to my YouTube channel and pressed play. This is gonna be a really sweet time because we are talking about giving God the glory and why we can have so much confidence in what we're doing whenever we know that it is by the Lord's strength we are taking on the task at hand, that it is by the Lord's power that we are able to do what we've been called to do, that it is by his spirit within us, that we are able to say yes, even when it's scary, that we're able to open our mouth and speak even whenever we may be afraid. And I am just so thankful for that confidence that comes from the Lord. I often get asked, like whenever I go and speak in front of large groups of people, or even like right here, speaking in front of a camera, do I ever get nervous? Do I ever get scared? And I think there's honestly a twofold answer to that question. The first answer is honestly, yes. <laughs> Pretty much every single time I speak in front of people, even if none of you are actually here in my living room, I know that I'm getting to speak to you as you're watching this video and there's nerves there. But I pray that that never goes away because these nerves, I really believe that the nervousness shows that there's care, that there's passion for what's being done. Like I really care about what I'm doing. I care about it being done with excellence. So there's a little bit of nerves. And then also I think the nervousness feeds my confidence because my nervousness leads me to be dependent upon the Lord, upon the one who I know is with me, who I know has called me to speak, who I know has given me the words to say, who I know's word never returns void. I I'm so thankful and I pray that I never stop getting a little nervous or a little like, oh, like the butterflies, the jitters, because it brings about this dependency upon God. It brings about this like reminder of, wow, this is, this is by his strength, but it's also a beautiful responsibility. And I don't take it lightly. I don't take speaking the, the word of God lightheartedly. I take it with seriousness. I have so much fun doing it, but I take it seriously. And so it keeps my heart in a posture of dependency on the Lord and in fear of the Lord. And then that just fuels confidence because it's like, this is what I was made to do. This is what the Lord has called me to do. And it is by his spirit that I'm doing it. So while yes, I'm nervous and that's really relatable and true, it then compels me forward in confidence because I know that it is by his strength that I'm doing what I'm doing. And that's really what I want to talk about today because we're going to be in Genesis chapter 40 and 41 talking about Joseph. I if I had, I have read these verses before, but if I had noticed what I noticed recently before, I like didn't, it didn't stick out to me the way that it has now. And I think that's so cool about God's word that as we are reading the word, it truly is alive and active. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our heart where everything about us is laid before the Lord. Nothing about us is hidden from him. We are fully known and we're exposed as we read his word. And it's inspired by God, breathed by God, and it equips us for every good work. And I think this is just so powerful that as I read the word, yes, I've read this chapter before, I've read that story before, but I'm picking up on things in it that I've never noticed. And it's always just so 
It's so fresh and it's so sweet because God is with me right here and right now and he's addressing my heart right here, right now with his word that is alive but also is unchanging. It's just wild and cool. But all that to say, we're going to be in Genesis 40 and 41 and some because something stuck out to me that I just had to share. So starting in verse chapter 40, verse 8, to give you a little bit of context of what's going on, Joseph is in prison right now. And there are two guys who are in prison with him. You have the cupbearer and you have the baker. And they both have dreams on the same night. They wake up the next morning and they're really concerned. Nobody's able to tell them what they mean. Um, they just are really like burdened because the dreams were confusing. They were a little scary and they can't interpret them to bring some clarity as to what the meaning behind them is. And Joseph, who's been hanging out with them for a hot minute in prison, he takes note like, hey, what's up? Why are you so sad? And that's where we're picking up in verse eight of chapter 40. And they replied why, when Joseph asked why they're so sad, this is their response. We both had dreams last night but no one can tell us what they mean. And then listen to this. This is what I think is so cool. Joseph says, interpreting dreams is God's business. Another version says, do not interpretations belong to God? And then he asks them to tell him their dreams so that he can interpret them. So before Moses goes and uses the ability that God's given him, Moses, I mean, Moses, <laughs> no, Joseph, Joseph has been given the ability to interpret dreams. But before he shows that he can do that, before he goes and interprets their dreams, he makes it so crystal clear, this is God's business. This belongs to the Lord. What I'm about to do, I my prayer is that it just reveals to you how awesome God is, how mighty God is. And that's what I pray that whenever I speak, it's like, ultimately, I pray that it reveals to you how much God loves you, how real he is, how worthy he is of our surrender, how present he is, how good he is, how mighty. I pray it just reveals that this is God's business. This is by his spirit. I just think that's so cool. This, what I'm about to do right now, it belongs to God. This ministry that the Lord has entrusted to me, it belongs to God. This family that I have, it belongs to God. This child that he's entrusted to me, it belongs to God. This school that he has allowed me to be a part of, and this degree that he's given me, these classes that he's put me in, these tests that I'm studying for, it belongs to God. These gifts that he has given me to steward in tons of different capacities, it belongs to God. Whatever I do, I'm working at it wholeheartedly, knowing that I am working for the Lord. And when I do, whenever people recognize and they bring applause or they attention is drawn, I'm going to give credit where credit is due and make sure that they know this belongs to the Lord. This is because of Him. This is His business. Friends, this just rocked my world and got me so excited and humbled me all at the same time. So then Joseph goes on to hear their dreams, interprets them, and not only interprets them, but I mean to the T. Everything that he said would happen to the baker happened. The baker ends up dying. Everything that he said about the cupbearer's dream ended up happening and he gets taken out of prison and put back as the king's cupbearer just as Mo I keep saying Moses just as Joseph had interpreted like to the T but then where we're about to pick up is in Genesis 41 now something really important to remember is that Joseph after he interpreted the baker and the cupbearer's dreams he asked them like hey whenever you get out of prison because both of their dreams revealed that they were going to be released out of prison he said like tell like tell pharaoh about me like remember me whenever you get out well they totally forget about him totally forget what he did for them just don't recall Joseph at all 
Well, fast forward a couple of years, and now the cupbearer is back in position with the with the king, with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh happens to have two dreams one night. And he wakes up, and he's just as the cupbearer and the baker were. He's so concerned. He, because they were very alarming. It was about some fat cows and some skinny cows. And I was like, what is going on? What is all this about? And he wakes up and calls in his magicians, calls in his wise men. No one can interpret the dreams. Nobody can tell him what they mean. And the cupbearer then's like, wait, I remember now there is this guy in prison. His name is Joseph and he interpreted my dream and everything he said would happen, happen. You need to call him up here and have him listen to your dream. So that's where we're picking up in Genesis 41. And so almost a similar conversation that Joseph had with the two guys in prison, he has with Pharaoh in the sense that Pharaoh's like, hey, I hear that you can interpret dreams. I would love like to tell you my dreams so that you can tell me what they mean. And this is Joseph's response. Listen to this. Two versions I'm gonna read, the NLT and the ESV. The NLT, he says, it is beyond my power to do this. In the, in, in the ESV, he says, it is not in me. It's beyond my power. It's not in me. How humble. God, you must become greater. I must become less. I'm going to give credit where credit is due before I do anything. Before we even talk about what these dreams are, before I tell you what they mean, I'm going to make sure that you know the God who's with me. I'm going to make sure that you know the God who has equipped me to do what I'm about to do, to help bring ease to your mind. I'm going to make sure that you know about my God. It's so good. This is incredible. But that's what he says. It's beyond my power to do this. It's, in, it's not in me. He says, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. Another version says, God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Without God, basically, he's saying, this is not possible. It's only God who can bring ease to your concern. It's only God who can give you what's favorable, who can actually give you what you need. It's only by God that I can interpret this dream. It makes me think of in Zechariah 4, where an angel of the Lord is talking with Zechariah, and they're talking about a guy named Zerubbabel, who God is saying, he's going to rebuild my temple. And this is what he says, I think is just so good. In verse 6 of chapter 4, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not going to be by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It's not going to be by Zerubbabel's force, by his might, by his power, by mustering up his own strength, by mustering up his own confidence. It's going to be by my spirit that he's going to complete the work that I have set out for him to finish. Same with Joseph. It is not going to be by Joseph sitting out and and making a whole vision board or having spread an Excel sheets ready. Like, okay, tell me the dream. Let's get ready, guys. Let's have, let's go sit in the conference room and let's map out what this could possibly mean. It, he, there's the, what God did in and through him was by God's power alone. And Joseph wanted to make sure that Pharaoh knew that. And then Pharaoh ends up being just amazed of like, can we find anybody else like this guy? Like there's something different about this guy. And it was the fact that Joseph was walking in step with the Lord and was making known what the Lord could do and what God was doing through him. I just think that's so powerful. And it sounds like, like I'm just emphasizing one point because friends, this is just a game changer that whenever we declare this is God's business, this is this belongs to the Lord. This is by his power in me. This is not because of me. Without him, this is impossible. It is only by God that you can have ease. It's only by God that you can receive what's favorable. And I'm just, I am his vessel. I get to partner with him in this to display his glory and his greatness and his ability. I think it's so cool in Ephesians 3.20. It says that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly greater things than what we could ever ask or imagine. 
according to his power at work within us, verse 21 says. Exceedingly and abundantly greater things. What's declared impossible is made possible and God does that through us. But how awesome and confident of a life will we live whenever we actually give credit to our credit is due saying this is because of God. It's so good. I want to read this psalm to you guys because I was just, as I was thinking on this message, I was, my heart was led to think on this psalm and it's a psalm that I really pray that this is like a declaration of my life. (laughs) Some parts of it are a little intense. Let me just read it to you. It's a Psalm of David. He says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that one statement, if it had not been for the Lord is a statement that I pray is an anthem of my life. If it had not been for the Lord, let Emma say, insert your name there. If it had not been for the Lord, I will say, my life would not look the way that it looks. I would not be able to be doing things the way that I'm getting to do them. I would not be able to have the confidence that I have. And I want to make sure in every opportunity, whether it's with YouTube, whether it's with podcasts, whether it's with writing books, whether it's going to get to speak in front of beautiful humans, the word of God, whether it's getting to have a clothing line and put messages of God's word on clothes and share it with people and every other detailed aspect that any opportunity that the Lord gives me, he puts me on the soccer team. He puts me on this college campus. He puts me in this family, in this home, whatever it is, I want to make sure that people know this is because of the Lord. This belongs to the Lord. This is God's business. This is for His glory. Without Him, this is impossible. Without Him, I wouldn't be who I am today. Without Him, I wouldn't be able to speak with confidence the way that I'm speaking. Without Him, if it had not been for the Lord, it is not by our might, it is not by our force, it is not by our strength or our own power that we can muster up, but it is by the Spirit of God. Let us be like Joseph making it known when we're given opportunity to steward the gifts God's given us, we make sure that people know what we're doing right now. We need to make sure you know my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength and my portion forever. It is by the power of his might that I am able to boldly stand here today and live the life that I'm living. Give glory to God today. Give credit where credit is due. Friends, I love y'all so much and I hope that you are just so encouraged and I hope that you are just relieved, relieved of the pressure of trying to muster up strength on your own and honestly strengthen an even greater confidence because you're depending upon the strength of the Lord who's with you. I am so excited about your day. I'm so excited about your life. And I hope that the rest of your day, the rest of your week is just beautiful. You are so, so loved and so significant and so on purpose. Be sure and comment down below how you were encouraged and also what other topics or where in scripture you'd like to be talked about in next videos and give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribe if you haven't for more encouragement as we go to the word together and as we grow in the lord together to god be the glory this is his business in jesus name amen bye guys